Hi guys, welcome at episode 2, that's also the final episode of this mini-serie. In this mini-serie, we will learn you how to make a landing page and product description page. With this modern website page, you will have a website that stands out more than the websites of your competitors, which will often lead to more sales. In the first episode, we made this beautiful landing page where we show our products. This page is different than many other pages because of the card carousel slider and the content slider buttons that are connected to each other. You will be able to control these buttons and pictures with remote arrows. If you want to learn this design, you have to watch my previous video. In this episode, the second episode, you will learn how to make this description page, where you can explain your products to potential clients. This page has more engagement than a regular product page because of the rotating object in the background. This page is only built with Elementor Pro and some custom CSS. If you like these tutorials, please like and subscribe for more videos. I have big plans for the future. And if you want to download this template and import it to your own website, please go to template-redesign.com and download it. If you don't know how to download my templates, I recommend you to watch this video. Or just click here if you want to watch that video now. This web page consists of six containers that includes all your elements. In this tutorial, I will take you through each element step by step. We start with the first container. Drag in a container in Elementor and open the layout settings. The first container has a full view width of 100 and a minimum view height of 10. The item direction are set to horizontal from left to right. The justify content is spaced between. The alignment of the items is center. This means that your items are displayed in the vertical center of your container. The gap between the elements is on zero. The next step is to open the border section. You can find the border section in the style tab. The only thing you need to do is to activate the box shadow. This way your header will stand out a little more. The final step is to open the advanced tab and deactivate the margin and padding link buttons. Now add a padding of 5% on the left side. So there will be a little space between your logo and the side of the screen. The final step is to set the Z index to 10, so your rotating object will be going behind your header. Now it's time to drag in a heading and nav menu. This heading has a black text color and the typography is Josephine Sands. The size is 2EM with a weight of 700. The nav menu is a horizontal layout and the alignment is set to the right. I also added an underline pointer. This animation is set to fade in. This way your pointer will fade in when you hover over it. I have set the mobile dropdown breakdown at none. This page is not responsive for mobile designs. Most of the times I make a separate web page for mobiles, so it will always be beautiful as well. Now open the style tab. The typography is of course Joseph Vincent's with an EM size of 1, and the text color is black. The hover color and active color are set to the green color. Set the video on pause if you want to see the green color code. The final step of this nav menu is to open the advanced step and add a padding of 4% on the right side. Also change the width to custom and make the width of the nav menu 80%. Good job, the first container is finished. Container 2 is a kind of an umbrella container. This is a big container where the other four containers will be incorporated. This container has also a view width of 100 and a view height is 90. Together with the header, you have a view height of 100. This way I made sure the whole page is visible. The direction of this container is horizontal. The justify content is set to start. The align items are set to center and the gap between the elements is set on zero. This was everything for container 2. Also make sure that the padding and margin link buttons in the advanced step are set off. Container 3 is the first container that go inside the umbrella container, container 2. Container 3 has a full view width of 50. The minimum view height is 80. The item direction is vertical. The justify content is set to the end. The align items are set to start. The gap between the element is set on 20 pixels. Now open the advanced step. As always, make sure that the padding and margin link buttons in the advanced tab are set off. 
The last thing you need to do is to add a 5% padding on the left side. Now we can insert the elements of container tree. Drag in a heading, a text element and another heading. For all of these elements, we use the typography Josephine Sense and the color is black. The first main heading has a EM size of 3 and a weight of 800. The text editor has an alignment of justify and the size is 1 EM with a weight of 400. The second heading or the price tag has a size of 1.5 EM and a weight of 400. This was everything for container 3. Container 4 is a small container inside container 3. Container 4 has a full view height of 100%. The item direction is set to horizontal. The justify content is set to space between. The gap between the elements is as always set to zero. Inside container 4 we have added two buttons. Start with dragging in one button. Because when the button is finished we are going to copy it. Type the text you like and set the alignment to center. Now open the style tab. The typography is Josephine Sans and the size is set to 1 EM. The weight is 800. The text color is black and the first button has a transparent background color. The next step is to open the advanced tab. Change the width to custom and give it a width of 33%. Then open the transform tab. Press on hover settings and change the scale to 1.1. The final step is to add a border. Open the border tab inside the advanced tab. Choose for the border type solid and give it a width of 1. The border radius needs to be set to 10 pixels. Now this button is finished and you can copy it. The only thing you need to do for the second button is to change the background color. This needs to be the same color as the nav menu. Don't forget to link your buttons. And now container 4 is done. Now we will start with container 5. The content width of container 5 is full width. The width has a view width of 50. The minimum view height is 80. The item direction is vertical. The justify content is set to the end. The next step is to open the advanced tab and you need to change the Z index to 11. In container 5 you also need to add some custom CSS. You can copy the custom CSS from our website template-redesign.com You need to copy the CSS from design 4.2 In container 5 you need to drag in the image that you want The image size depends on the image that you use For my image size large is fine Yes we made it to container 6 The last container With container 6 we start with the content width The content width is set to full width The width is 500 pixels and the minimum height is also 500 pixels. Now open the start tab of the The background color of the square is a gradient color. The main color is the same as the nav menu. The second color is a little more dark green. The location of the first color is zero and the location of the second color is 100. The type of the square box is radial and the position is center center. You also have to style the border of this container. The border radius of this container is 10 pixels and it also has a box shadow. The box shadow has the following stats. Horizontal 0, vertical 0, blur 10, spread 0 and let the position stay on outline. For container 6 you also need to make some changes in the advanced tab. The first thing you need to change here is the position. Change the position to absolute and make the horizontal orientation to the right and change the vertical orientation to the top. The offset of the square is set to minus 60.5%. Make sure you give your container a CSS class name so you can let it rotate. I named it box3. The final step of this design is to add a custom CSS code. You can also copy this code from my site. You will find it at design 4.2. Paste that code inside the custom CSS tab. This is it guys, I hope you like this design and maybe you can use it for your own project. Don't hesitate to download it from our website. That's a lot quicker than follow every step in this tutorial. And if you want to see more designs, please like and subscribe. I see you next time. Bye.